Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Nancy and I'm an entomologist, which means that I study bugs and I'm living in Ecuador. And I'm so excited to talk to you about bugs. So if you like bugs or biology, feel free to go down below and click the subscribe button and then the little bell notification next to it so that way you get notified when I put out content. Today is all about how beetles fold their wings underneath their shell. There's a PDF to go along with today's topic, so if you want this PDF, all you have to do is go down into the description and there is a link for you to download it. I have this beautiful beetle. His name is Megasoma acteon, or he's a rhinoceros beetle if you want a name that you could probably pronounce in English. All right, so let's talk about some of the important parts on this beetle. The first is his head, which is like, this horn is coming off of his head, and you can see his eye, like, down there. And so this relatively small segment is his head. And then we are going to move on to the thorax, and the thorax houses the wings and the legs. So you can see, like, here is part of the thorax. It's called the prothorax and it has like these two big horns on it. And then the second segment of the thorax is right here and that's where these come off. This is the shell. One of them, singular, is called an elytron, but together they're plural and called elytra. And then off the third segment of, this, of the thorax, here, you get the wings. So now that we've got some of the basic anatomy of the beetle out of the way, we can start talking about how he actually folds these wings up underneath this shell. And he's a pretty big beetle, and so you can see like the wings are larger than the shell, but it's still not like really astounding. And so we're going to talk about today the origami behind that folding. When you see news articles or papers being released about wing folding and insects in general, you'll often see things like breaks the laws of origami or new origami wing folding. And that's because what you can do with paper is quite limited, but the wings of insects are made out of a really remarkable material called resilin. And resilin is very resilient, as the name might suggest. So it's very resilient and very, very flexible, which means that you can get these really complex wing folding mechanics. And because it's so springy and flexible, resilin stores a lot of potential energy. So when the beetles are folding their wings, not only are they like memory and self folding, but the way that they're folded stores a lot of potential energy. So when the beetle opens those wings, when a beetle opens that shell, the wings just kind of spring open because of all the stored energy. Most of this knowledge has been documented in really old textbooks or in really old journals. I know I've talked about this before, but beetles are some of the most biodiverse animals on the planet, making up to 20% of the known species that we have on the planet. And their numbers are about 350,000 to 400,000 described species of beetle. And so the way that they fold their wings under their shell is just about as diverse as beetles themselves are. So there's not just like one size fits all. Because of the memory folding aspect of the wing, when the beetle is ready to tuck those wings away, it doesn't take that much effort or that long for the beetle to refold those wings underneath the shell. One of the most simple wing folding is done in the scarab. So there's only a few folds along certain lines that make the wing collapse. This is a scarab beetle and he was already found dead, so have no worry. Closed and would pop open. I have taken off the elytron and now we can see how the beetle's wings are folded. It's, it's angled specifically to fit under the elytra and then the first is that it opens out and then it has this joint right at the top of the wing right here. It has a joint and that's where the wing would fold out. And then there's a second fold, so you can see it kind of just pop back into place. There's a, f there's a second fold here in between the two major veins of the wing. There's a bunch of other beetles, especially in a group called Staphylinids or the Rove beetles, where the elytra or the shell is 
incredibly reduced. And the wing folding that goes on to get those wings under that shell is asymmetric and very complicated. As I mentioned before, wing folding in beetles isn't something that's particularly new. We kind of knew this by studying dead specimens, right? If the specimen is dead, you can just open up the wing and you can calculate where all the folds are. However, scientists wanted to see the folding process in real life. So what they did is they found some ladybugs, and by found I mean reared, they, but they reared or bought some ladybugs. They took off one of the shells, so one of the elytra, and they replaced it with a silicone elytron, so it's a clear plastic version of the ladybug shell they just kind of glued on. And so in real life, they could videotape how the wing was being folded and then they could make 3D models of it. And it's not just beetles in which we've studied wing folding, we've also studied, studied wing folding in another group called earwigs. And earwigs, while they look superficially similar to the rove beetles that I showed you a little bit ago, they are a completely different group and not at all related. But they also make a great study organism because they also can fold their wings up under a really, really tiny space. And they do it in a different way than beetles do. These earwigs can fold their wings up into a space that is 10 times smaller than what the wing is expanded. And so this has a lot of potential for uses in technology. Scientists are studying this wing folding mechanism for a few reasons. First of all, we're trying to fit big things into small spaces. Think about our electronics where we need more and more and more computing power and we're trying to get it into a thinner and thinner and thinner amount of space. Or on spaceships where you need to pack for the lives of several people for several months up in space. Like, there's not space on the space shuttle for all of that stuff unless you can fold it and pack it in there really nicely. And so we are studying how beetles and other insects are folding their wings so that way we can copy that technology and apply it from everything from your cell phone to space shuttles. If you guys are interested in any of the studies or in any of the references that I use today, feel free to check out the links in the description because you can take a closer look at any of these studies. And I hope that your curiosity was piqued, you learned something new, and that you are excited to keep learning about bugs.